fellow Toastmasters. A few weeks ago, an esteemed member, Z, who is unfortunately not here, mentioned, or he, he had a speech that essentially gave us the pros and benefits, the uh, pros and cons of being a dog owner versus a cat owner. Those of you who know us might know that I personally have three cats. So I had a few disagreements with that. Many of you might think this is going to be a similar speech telling us the joys of having a cat. You'd be wrong. <laughs> Cats are the most dangerous beings on the planet. <laughs> and I am going to tell you why. Cats in general have three main weapons. Their looks, their sounds, and their constant need of attention. So first let me tell you about looks. <laughs> Cats in general are ador adorable, right from birth all the way up until extremely old cats. Even the ones that are furless have their own benefits and qualities to them. That is just to get you to trust them. They want you to lower your guard just so they can weasel their way into your hearts. This is how they spread to each and every single one of your homes. Even a stray cat on the street who has not been fed and has no time to groom looks adorable for some strange reason. <laughs> and that's just so you would take it home where they have ample opportunity to assassinate you. <laughs> I'll get into that in a little bit. And that's the soft to talk about their cute little sounds. Again, when they beg, it's to appeal to your weakness. Some cats go, meow. Really soft. Like a mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Others go, oh. <laughs> and all of them are still cute in its own way. But that's also appeal to your weakness, especially when you have food nearby. Obviously, they they just want some. That's that's what you think, and uh, they tug at your heartstrings until they get a little bit of what you got. Little do you know that when they steal this food, they're stealing your sustenance, they're stealing your power, and making them stronger in the outcome. So while it might be a little bit here and there, this is just another means for them to get closer to you. Another way that you, another thing you might hear is their hissing. Obviously, cats have feelings, and sometimes they just can't hold in how much they hate you. <laughs> their hissing is like their war cry. So if you hear that, that's that's a good means to step back, give it some space. Lastly, you might hear a random caterwauling. Even if you do not have a cat, just Outside in the middle of the night, you'll just hear cats yelling, fighting, all of that. No one really knows why they do this, but there's a good chance that they're just giving each other updates of your status. <laughs> <laughs> that way, they know for sure whether or not you're an ample time to be to be strike <laughs> struck down, or whether or not this could be a war cry just to get everyone to rally together and take down your house. Let's talk about their other weapon, the constant seeking and striving for attention. Have you seen the cats perform these acts on you, such as kneading on you, laying near these ele electric devices that we have, pausing, pawing at you while you sleep? Or have seeing a cat constantly spend time in the litter box? Or bringing you dead animals? Well, I'm actually going to tell you the truth about these little sections. When they need on you, you're actually looking for vulnerable spots <laughs> on your body. The softest spots, the easiest places to take you down. A lot of times you'll see cats laying on the computer or near something like that. They know that humans have advanced technology and they need to either get rid of that somehow, interrupt your interface and your intelligence, or they're somehow learning a way to transfer that knowledge from a computer to their cat mind. We haven't figured that out yet. <laughs> when they paw at you while you're sleep, sleeping, especially near your face, there's a good chance they're really just trying to smother you. They, they don't realize that their tiny paws need to really get a, a firm grasp to do that. A lot of times, cats spend a lot of time in litter box. We, and, and it's possible to actually toilet train cats. You might have heard of it. But they prefer the litter box because that is how they practice burying the bodies. As soon as, as soon as they take you down, they need to hide the evidence so no other humans are aware of this. And some cats bring dead animals to their owners, owners of 
thought that it's a sign of respect or teasing, but really, it's a dead, it's, it's an omen, you know? They're, they're trying to mark you. Here's some other signs to watch out for. Hiding in dark spaces while they're watching you. This is obviously a technique to get ready to strike at any moment. In fact, when they spread out the room, as soon as you walk into a room, it's a good chance that that was a failed assassination attempt and they're getting ready for their next hit. And other cats just constantly give you a stink eye. And that's when they, similar to hissing, they can't hold back all the resentment that they hold for humanity. And they just can't help looking that way. So what do they want? Obviously, the ultimate goal of cats is role domination. They have a very solipsistic type of view to where they want to be the one and only things out there. They're slowly building a power because right now there's about 76 million cats in the US alone. Although we have around 320 million humans, they're, they're getting up there. <laughs> um, things like the SPCA are keeping the population as controlled as possible, but the more cats just get into our homes, the easier it'll be for when they actually uh, call for help. <laughs> Which will be the last, next thing. They'll call for reinforcements. I'm talking about little cats here, but there are big cats out there. And as soon as they get word out to those big cats, they're going to take us down hardcore. <laughs> we don't know what their last step is. We don't know what their next plan is. And hopefully we get the best scientists to figure it out. The only thing I could do is give you this advice. It's best to play dumb. Be nice to them. Pretend that you don't know anything so they don't call for help and immediately send the hit out. And honestly, at this point, it might be too late. So your best bet is to make friends with them, be extremely nice to them, adopt some kittens from the SPCA, so when they eventually do take over, you're on their right side. For any other information, I show this book to you. How to help your cat is called and kill you. Hopefully you can all be prepared. Thank you very much. <laughs>